mum's done, she's going home. Bye. <laughs> I'm stood in Never Stowey. There's some roadworks going on over there, but this place is rather exciting because this is right on the edge of the Quantock Hills AONB, which was the first AONB to be designated in England, so area of outstanding natural beauty. Behind me, you can see this sign. It is closed at the moment, but this is Coleridge Cottage. The reason why I'm stood here is because I'm about to head out and walk the Coleridge Way. So it's designated in 2005 as a long distance footpath. It's waymarked. Starts here in Never Stowey, heads up to Exmoor National Park and finishes in Lynmouth on the coast. So we get a bit of southwest coastal path walking as well. Now initially I was planning on walking this trail in two days, but I've decided to take it a little bit more leisurely. Uh, so we're going to be doing it in two and a bit days. I'm not entirely sure how long it's actually going to take because we are going to wild camp. Now I say we, I'm going to come over here and uh, I can introduce my hiking friends for this trip. So it's Abby, it's Anna. <laughs> And it's Anne. So you'll recognize these guys from uh, different trails that I've done. Anne is obviously a very experienced long distance backpacker and uh, the pro of the group, shall we say. <laughs> Officially also, what did I dub you? Wild camp leader. Chief of wild Chief of wild camping. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Anna's first, list first long distance trail, which is super exciting. How are you feeling about that? Pumped. Pumped. Yeah, okay, that's just, a good answer. Just I mean, the best company I could ask for. There you go, yeah. <laughs> now the weather does look like it's potentially going to get a bit sketchy uh, in a couple of days, so we'll just see how we go. But it is advertised as an easy trail, so we're just going to have a little bit of fun. Are you guys ready? Yeah. 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 All right, let's head off along the trail. Coleridge lived in Never Stowey from 1797 to 1799, and his cottage is a popular tourist destination. Leaving the cottage behind, we found a sign by the clock tower in the middle of the village. Here we are, Linton. That's where we're headed for in however many days time, 52 miles. That way, with these people. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it was 51 yeah, I thought it was 51. You told me it was 51. <laughs> you told me it was 52. Did I? Yeah. I always add on one because I'm probably going to get lost. <laughs> Heading west through the village, we pass the remains of Neverstowey Castle, a Norman Motton Bailey, although little is visible today. We were in good spirits as we embarked on our new adventure. Oh, I love how we're just walking down the middle of the road. <laughs> it's like the three of us, like... Doo, 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 doo. How cool is this? The caterpillar! <laughs> is there a caterpillar? Oh, look at its ears! <laughs> or antler things. What are they called? <laughs> Yeah, that. <laughs> Antennae. <laughs> Here is the first quill. So the quills are what we're following on this trail. So obviously Samuel Coleridge was a poet uh, in the 1700s. He actually only stayed here for a few years. But what's quite nice is we are going to crisscross different settlements where Coleridge and Wordsworth, his friend, stayed. Um, I am no poet. I don't know very many poems. But let's just see how artistic I can get with this film. Maybe I'll throw a few in as we continue along the trail. They found a skeleton. Everything on the trail is worth photographing. Look at you guys. <laughs> so good. Very rarely do we actually Don't die! <laughs> Hmm. So we are using this map, which is a zigzag map. It's yellow by the footpath series. So there's actually two for the Coleridge Way, and it's 1 to 16, as Anne is beautifully demonstrating. Nether Stowey. So followed the road. This is. Is this where we're turning off? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Follow this little pathy thing and go that way. And we'll go steeply up there. Fun, fun. This is a nice little river. Yep. 
just climbing up this hill, field hill, hill field, incline. Uh, awesome views coming out over the coast. And you can see there, two big square blocks, kind of like blue Lego bricks. That is Hinkley Point, a nuclear power station. Hinkley Point has recently gained a lot of media attention as a Point C has been added as an upgrade, making it the first nuclear power station to be built in the UK for over 20 years, providing low carbon electricity for over 6 million homes. <laughs> What's that lurking in the trees? Oh, it's an ant. <laughs> Very helpful sign. We seem to have struck lucky. It has just started trying to rain uh, we're under the trees, so all is well. Now, I alluded to our rough schedule earlier. We are doing this in two and a bit days. In truth, we don't really know how long it's going to take. Um, as I mentioned, we are wild camping. We are hoping to do about 16, 17 miles today. Uh, find somewhere, pitch up, sort of half eight, nine-ish. Tomorrow, just see how we go. <laughs> and then on Saturday, so in two days time, we'll finish the walk at Linton. Obviously, this is a linear route. Uh, so my dad is then going to come and pick us up on the coast of Exmoor and drive us back to another story. That's how we're managing this. Uh, so there's a little bit of logistics, but otherwise the plan is very flexible. Let's just see how we get on. The route took us through woodland, dark in the overcast skies, and then out onto the heathland of the Quantock Hills. Just one of many of the varied landscapes we would travel through on our journey. This is the sacred food of backpacking. This is a bilberry. Hallelujah. Look how big these are. They're really, really big actually. Very, very good quality bilberries. And the bushes are ripe with them. Look at that one. One must always savour the first bilberry. I did, quickly. Actually, that's a good bilberry. I mean, that's that is good. proper quality yeah, bilberry production right there. Bilberries can be found across many native landscapes and upper heath or mountain areas. Here, we were actually within Cecil Oak Woodland, distinguished by tall, gnarly trees, different from English oak in that the acorns are attached to the outer twigs rather than the stalks. So Anne, chief navigational professional, <laughs> has randomly highlighted, no, wonderfully highlighted that we may have accidentally taken a wrong turn. Completely my fault. You can tell by the hand stains, we've had an incident. <laughs> With bilberries only, of course. Um, so we <laughs> have taken this turning, um, <clears throat> left as opposed to right, and we're coming down towards Hol Holford Coombe, which is actually genuinely a really nice coombe. So we're just going to drop down, follow that into Holford's Coombe, and then we can pick up the way again. So we're just going to miss this little stretch um, along the top. Is that okay with you? Yeah. We're blue blazing. Yeah. Dun dun dun. <laughs> we commit to walking, and then this happens. <laughs> Look, I know there's so many. <laughs> Do you like them? I hate them. Oh. <laughs> I don't like them at all. Are you picking them for me then? <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, oh one. you dropped one. I'm sorry. It was lovely to walk down the coombe into Holford with a canopy of broad leafed trees sheltering us from the drizzle and a gravel track leading the way. River crossing. Hold hands. Face the current. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying no. We've just popped out here, which is on the edge of Holford, in this stream basically I grew up playing in. Um, we'd come here as a kid, paddling, building dams. Such a nice spot, as you can see, being utilised very nicely. Uh, anyway, we're going to head down into Holford now, pass by the house Wordsworth used to stay in. Um, I think we walked by it anyway, and then carry on through the Quantock Hills. A lot of, um... Holford is a peaceful place, home to just under 400 people. There isn't a huge amount to see, but the Holford Coombe Hotel is a popular stop-off for walkers in search of a brew. 
Otherwise, most folk tend to head to the green to enjoy a picnic on a sunny day. Beep beep. <laughs> what was that? Meep meep. Meep <laughs> meep. meep. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> That's nice. Such cute houses. Heading out of the village, we pass by an old dog pound, dating to the 16th and 17th centuries. It was likely built to house stray dogs to prevent them from causing trouble in the grounds of the Alfruxton estate. Alfruxton House was built in the 18th century and was home to William Wordsworth and his sister Dorothy from 1797 to 1798 during their time of friendship with Coleridge. During World War II, it was used to house evacuees, but later it switched hands a number of times through various sales until it fell into the hands of the Alfruxton Park Trust for use by the Triratna Buddhist community. Parts of the estate are still undergoing restoration. I just found some hazelnuts and they appear to be healthy. Uh, mm. It's like <laughs> Break your teeth. Full. full of nut. Full of nut, uneaten. Can we see? Yeah. They're so all white and soft. Just like when you buy a soft coconut and it has all of the water still inside. And then what you can actually hopefully do. Let's <laughs> get a piece out. Get a piece out. Use another piece. Scrape it out of there. Nice. Mm. Just a little bit of nut. What does it taste like? Mm, has a little bit of um, sourness to it, but generally sweet. Very good. Just like a young nut. So these trees here, kind of a maple. And you can see how incredible is that trunk system and the root network there. Amazing. Nice little shelter if you're a little bunny and it's raining. <laughs> and then go up. Possibly part of some old walling system actually. <laughs> Look at this. Hello. <laughs> the rain is really trying to set in now. So we thought we'd just stop in the shelter patch and have a bite to eat. <laughs> Drippy. Oh, coming down off the leaves. We decided to take a short break as the rain got heavier, sheltering under the trees. It felt good to just sit and be still with nature all around us so we could absorb the sounds and the smells and really just relax into the pace of the trail. We all have Berghaus pack light trousers and they're all going on. <laughs> One pair, two pairs, three pairs. <laughs> Just leave it like that, big old flares, it's in the style. <laughs> Child of the 90s, you are. Yeah, that's when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Proper look at it. <laughs> right then, soldiers, we good to go? Good to go. Good to go. The enthusiasm is real. <laughs> Great, that's enthusiasm for all of us at once. <laughs> On to Bicknola now. Long. The path. Hello. <laughs> These guys sheltering from the rain. Oh, I'm sorry. It has kind of stopped raining. Run away, run away. And you can see down there a view. That's a good sign that the weather's cleared. <laughs> you might be able to hear it in the background. We're dropping down to the A39. We've got a little stretch following that. And our next destination is 
the village of Bicknola, and um, Bicknola Post is named after it. Can you see, can you see that woodpecker hole? Oh uh, yeah. In the tree. It's uh, nice walking so far, the weather has decided to not rain on us, now that we're fully geared up, so it's a good thing really, right? That's good, yeah, yeah. we don't mind. Yeah, just getting, just we'll getting opinion. Just, we'll just have to strip off in an hour. We will, yeah. <laughs> too hot by then. Too hot. <laughs> See the Alma Knight, uh, West Somerset Coastal Path. So it's our third long distance coastal path so far. So College Way, the Contour Greenway, and now this one. It would be a bit tough. It's just a bit overgrown. What, what is this? Why did I roll my trousers up? <laughs> Mistake 101. Ugh. <laughs> we, both, we both slipped at the same time. <laughs> Ninja moves. <sighs> During this trail, I was actually playing around with a new camera, the DJI Osmo Action Cam, although it was already playing up <laughs> and causing a lot of issues. Still, despite the rain and dodgy tech, we were having a good time. We even spotted a herd of deer, likely roe, in the fields nearby, and eyed up the short poems that we would find on the edge of fences and benches. We are dropping down to the A road that we've been following for a while. This is near West Contox Head. Rain is doing whatever it's doing, not entirely sure. And there's a pub. That's all I have to say, with a deer outside of it. West Contock Head, also known as St Audrey's, is well known for its old medieval church, which was entirely rebuilt in 1856 and rededicated to St Etheldrina, an Anglo-Saxon saint. What with the rain, we decided we wouldn't stop and look in the church, and instead continued on along the path, passing the windmill in, and then off along a quieter road. Leaving the main road, heading along a less main road. The avenue, to be exact. Pressing on through West Contox Head now, uh, pretty soon we're going to turn off, so the road will continue on to Bicknoller and we're going to sort of follow a footpath and then drop down into the village itself. We left the buildings behind us in exchange for more ancient woodland where we found a rather interesting construction hiding beneath the shrubs. What is it? Scary. Oh man, it's a well! Whoa! It goes right down! So you can see, we found this well here. The water is right there, but I have no idea. I'm not let go of my stick. How deep that goes down. Wow, that's cool. The outside of it. Just this random hot thing. There we go. What have you found, Anne? A resting spot. A resting spot. Is it a good resting spot? Resting spot. Do you approve? I think Very I good. Like a nice resting spot. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> now being with the crew. The AA crew. A A A. The Triple A crew. Triple A crew. We yeah. don't go to Will and we do go to Will. Oh, hey! Hello lovely. Hey there. <laughs> We're nice people. We're nice people. <laughs> Skirting alongside the edge of this fence, you can see the views now really opening up. Um, I don't know what the weather's doing, I keep saying that because I really don't. Uh, just sort of um, thinking about the route so far, just watch that wire guys, and um, questioning why it sort of skirts along the edge of the Quantock Hills, because you really don't get to see the best scenery and views that it has to offer. Um, heading over the top around Big Nola Post is genuinely a jolly nice walk uh, with the views down all the different coombs, but I'm not complaining, it just feels a bit random. Anyway, uh, pretty soon we'll be turning 
off the hills themselves and down into Bicknola. So basically into the views that we can see. Cheers. <laughs> Further along the trail, and we pass by an old quarry. The Quantox Hills are largely formed of rocks from the Devonian period, and in the northwestern areas, hangman grits dominate, a sandstone rock, red in colour, that has been quarried for road building over the years. From the quarry, we drop down into Bicknola, a small collection of classic country houses, and home to the Church of St George, and the independently run Bicknola shop. Here's the main road, A358. Looks like we're good to go. <laughs> We've got a railway line. Stop, look, listen, cross. Don't stand in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> These were the tracks of the West Somerset Railway, the longest independent heritage railway in the UK, at 20 miles in length. What are you guys talking about? Nightshade. Bridge. Where's the nightshade? Anne is a master of information here. Growing in the hedge. Yeah. An interesting plant, you see. Yeah, and look at the berries. There were a huge number of plants, flowers, and just general wildlife species everywhere we looked, and plenty of gently flowing streams too. It was a really lovely part of the world to be walking in. Further on, and we found ourselves looking back over the Quantock Hills. We were now in the middle lands between the area of outstanding natural beauty and Exmoor National Park. Hashtag hiker problem. <laughs> Good effort. I don't think I'll fit with my pack. Oh no, I don't want to be the only one who can't fit. <laughs> Gone. <Aww. laughs> it's the easiest solution, my friends, <laughs> is to use the other gate. Oh, come on. <laughs> I've spent enough of my life wedged in the corner of gates. <laughs> is it fun? Is that, is that enjoyable? <laughs> that is very enjoyable. <laughs> it's so dense. <laughs> it's very, very dense. <laughs> well, we found your happy place. <laughs> Cut a bit off, that'll be our pillow for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We were now within Stamford Brett, yet another little village along the way. The church here dates back to 1300 and is a designated Grade 2 listed building. There are emotive war memorials in the graveyard, remembering locals who lost their lives during the First and Second World Wars. Many of the buildings in the village, though, had been made into family homes, such as the old school, which had been renovated. Ooh. Love finding these. No, you can't call anyone, <laughs> but you can get an education. Ta da! <laughs> nice thick hedge here. And there is the sign. <laughs> oh, look, an old water pump there. It's always nice to stumble upon these things. So many hidden gems in all of our little towns and villages. Check out this path. The water has clearly cut or underscored the terrain here. And there's this big gnarly hole. As you do when you fill in it then. The hangman's grit, iconic red colour was really visible throughout the lands. Even in the grey afternoon light, it stood out seriously boldly. 
We found lovely wildflower meadows living in the hedgerows. There was so much to see all around us. And to be honest, walking was pretty slow. We just had to stop and take it all in. <laughs> it's very, very soft. Look, it's like a fancy Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> What did you find? A little frog. A little frog. Oh. You're so cute. We have reached a road. This road is going to take us down into Monk Silver. Has anybody got the time? It is 7.40. It is 7.40. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and we are starting to prick our ears up and open our eyes in search of somewhere to pitch up tonight. Uh, we have a couple of ideas. But first up, let's just get into the village and then we can discuss further plans. Monk Silver sits right on the border of Exmoor National Park and its name means Monk's Wood in Old English. The village pub, the Notley Arms, serves locally sourced food, but otherwise it's a sleepy place. Or at least it was at 8pm in the evening. We are currently on the hunt for water. So we're just dropping into the church, trying the old churchyard trick. Just going to see if there is a pipe with water in it. <laughs> okay, first person to find a pipe wins. Oh, Anne always has Echo's cakes wherever we go. Thank you very much. Ta-da! Oh, you can try one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, shall I try from you first? No, you'll like, like it. it. If you don't like it, I'll eat it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Anne. This is on camera. You're hoping she doesn't like it. Mm. <laughs> Echo's cake celebration. Yet another church to investigate, this building was of mixed heritage and is dedicated to all saints. In 1583, Sir Francis Drake married his second wife here. Interesting, given that it was really quite little. Foraging with Anna, what have you found? Berry blacks. Berry blacks? Blackberries! <laughs> Mm, those are better. These yeah. Mm. We have successfully got water from the church, and it was really nice because there was a sign inside saying that we could get water. So that was a good feeling. Uh, we've now left the trail and we're heading along the B Road. Um, and at some point, we're going to pick up a track on the right into the forest where hopefully we can just find somewhere flattish to pitch up for the night. Just down a quiet road was the Coombe Sydenham Country Park and a historic 15th century manor house set in 500 acres of estate. Nowadays, it's a pretty run down place, undergoing restorations, but upon reaching the grounds, Anna unexpectedly shed her pack and legged it to follow a groundskeeper who was bombing about in a little tractor. It was a really comical thing to watch, human chasing vehicle across hayfield. <laughs> she did pretty good though. Hello, how did that go? Smiley one who has so much ridiculous energy. <laughs> Went well. Yeah? Yeah, he normally does not encourage it. Yeah. But behind the white sacks back there. Oh, and the there sack. are some oh, white right. sacks. Okay. I think we can walk down here. Like... I have to say, I do find it hard, the idea of going and asking someone permission to camp. But that is one of the benefits of having an Anna in your life. Um, so she sourced us this spot on this farm. Um, now, wild camping is actually illegal in England. Other than Dartmoor, you can legally camp there. But of course, if you have permission, you can camp wherever you want, and he's given us permission. So we are camping here. We have water from the church. We're happy people, yes? 
Yes. Very happy. Very happy. <laughs> Alright, let's get some sense stuff. Yeah. Then we can have some scoff. Yeah. Skadoosh. Skadoosh. Job done. Skadoosh. <laughs> well, I grabbed her hand. Skadoosh. She couldn't get away. Skadoosh. Skadoosh. Oh. Tense up, go. Perhaps the most satisfying part of any walking day is when your boots come off, apart from when you're sharing a tent with someone who has to stick with your stinky feet. <laughs> my you mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mine always outstink yours. <laughs> well, these new socks held up quite well. I was wearing these Bridgedale ones. They're just the Trek light. I mean, they've fluffed up a bit. Ooh. I mean, yeah, and you tried the black ones. I'm not sure how I feel about the blue anymore. I mean, that is quite blue. <laughs> it is quite blue. The black is quite... It's quite... It's quite... Calming. Yeah. How do you feel about the sock? We can share it up here. How, do, how does <laughs> that feel for you? Um, I don't know. Walking socks are always even. Everything else is odd. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. How many you noticed? I never wear even socks. Yeah, but that's why. If we have the same <laughs> pair of socks, we've both wo worn them for only a day. True, but we... Okay, fine. We'll try size. it. I'll try it. Deal? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> cheesy. High foot. <laughs> Sweaty feet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. How's our house? In the middle of a field. Yeah. yeah. Do you like it's the house? Good. Yeah, it's a good house. <laughs> can I hang out my socks on the washing line? No. <laughs> you can keep them outside. Please. No, they are new and you've only worn them a day, but they're this... all wet. <laughs> but look how sad they are. <laughs> It's a sad, sad, sad Oh, come on. <laughs> Tawny. Normally when I'm on the trail, I eat uh, ration packs that are dehydrated. So this is real termat. This is ridiculously light. I mean, this weighs 121 grams. Uh, it's got 400, uh, no, 509 calories in it. So that's a decent chunk. You see how it's really compact there. Packs away super nicely in the bag. But when you're on a short trail like this, um, you can bring luxury items because you only have to carry them for a day or two. And so we brought these. So this is just some random rice thing, Peruvian style. It literally weighs double, 220 grams. So in theory, I could have two ration packs and a little bit extra for the weight of this. But it's kind of exciting because we can just eat these straight out of the packet and it's something with a little bit more nutrition. So let's see how we get on with these. Let's smell it. Oh, that does smell so good. <laughs> So what's yours? Tomato. Tomatoey. 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 <laughs> Tomatoey. Mm. Does this smell nice? Mm-hmm. Mmm. <laughs> the viewers have ah. got to be included, right? Yeah. Oh, they just smell good as well, actually. <laughs> it's kind of like tomato soup, though. That's yeah. quite intense. Mash, mash, mash. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> When you do, it's a hug for my brain and it keeps me playing. Probably coffee, I need you. Good morning, folks. We are leaving our campsite. See that? Leave no trace. No one even knows we were there. <laughs> Goodbye, campsite. It's been a good night. And we're heading off on day two on the Coleridge Way. Where are we going today? Nobody knows. 
but we're hopefully going to get to around Porlock, uh, which is where we'll sort of join the southwest coast of the path. That's about 20, 21 miles away, so we'll see how we go. Plenty of time, uh, setting out just at about half past seven now. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, okay, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> how are you guys feeling? Good. Yeah? Great. A okay. A okay. A -okay. <laughs> Triple A okay. Triple A okay. Anna and Abby okay. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're going to head back up to Monk Silver, back to church, just refill our water, and then we'll head off along the trail. Back at the church, let's resupply on some liquid. Come around the corner. Here is the tap. I heard a noise around here. Just going to investigate in a graveyard. I can never be too sure. Oh, look at this. It's a nana. Hi. It's still alive. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> I'm dead walking. <laughs> walking dead. <laughs> I'm a dead woman walking. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm refilling the water. Oh yeah? Yeah, because we're thirsty. We are? We are a thirsty, thirsty bun. Thirsty hikers. Yeah. Back on the trail, we headed on up through some woods. Again, dark in the overcast weather. It was muggy too, so the streams and little waterfalls proved to be refreshing. Got the sign here, so the blue is the bride away, yellow is the footpath. Still heading to Roadwater, that's our next settlement, two miles away. That way. Okay. Also, folks, I would like to point out this situation here. Do you see this? Yes, this is cloud, but this, this is not cloud. This is blue sky. Happy days. <laughs> okay, this is not my camera that's wonky, this is genuinely just an incline. <laughs> Which way are we going on the incline? I'm happy to go this way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. We have raspberries picked on the road. Oh man, that is a good raspberry. I very much approve. <laughs> Look, raspberries. They're really ripe. They're right? perfect. Careful. You know, you can just go around. Everywhere we looked, there was an abundance of life and colour, and further along, the views opened out, and we could see a patchwork of fields and woodland. It really was a green and pleasant land. Always interesting walking past these old field boundaries here. You can see interlaced with the trees is this stonework, quite slaty. Yeah. Uh, I wonder how old these are though, when they took seed and grew. It is going to be interesting when we get to Exmoor. Um, so we're very close to the National Park boundary now, and much of Exmoor is called the Exmoor Forest. Is it covered in trees? No, it is not. It's just the term used for ancient or old hunting grounds um, when the royalists and the uh, sort of <laughs> very famous wealthy people used to go out and hunt stags and the, the red deer that live on Exmoor. And they are still monitored and managed actually because if their populations get out of control, just as in Scotland, then they can really um, tear up the, the moorland and the small shrubs that are growing through because a lot of them are very delicate, very sort of ankle high in size. So they need to be managed and, and looked after. See that? The rock with the uh, oak tree clinging on. Really nice in this sort of uh, cleared forested area with beautiful pinky purple flowers. It's a rose bay willow herb, often grows taller than me. Uh, in America, it's called fireweed. So it's really quite common, especially this time of year. And I love when it goes to seed because the wind blows and the seeds just float over your head. It sort of feels like it in a cloud. Here's some here, just coming through to seed. So fluffy. <laughs> oh, 
Shiny Lapras. And what is, what is that? It's a Pokemon. A Pokemon? Did you catch it? No. Oh. It's run away. It, oh. it jumped out. Sad times. This last catches Pokemon in the On most the remote places in the UK. <laughs> I mean... The next settlement along the way was Roadwater, through which passed the West Somerset Mineral Railway, which transported iron ore in the 19th century from the Brendan Hills to watch it on the north coast. Coleridge Way continues on, follow road and take next path on the left. Wow, thank you, it's very helpful. And there's even a code thing to scan in case we get confused. Public footpath, Tree Borough Lane, one and a half miles. It seemed that every landscape transition revealed a new treat for us. In this woodland, Anna found a beautiful little jay feather, striking blue, white and black. Then it was on through even more farmland. To be honest, we were grateful for the quality of the signing along the trail. Otherwise, we most certainly would have been walking a maze of a route. These two here, they're a bit lazy. No, they were... we're not lazy. Well, you want me to pull you the rest of the way. I'll give it a try. Me hey. <laughs> me. <Meep, meep. laughs> That's me, that is. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> well done. Oh, we're at the end now. Cup of tea. You get off, then I can do it. <laughs> See the houses behind, so that's Luxborough, uh, just sort of joined with Kingsbridge, which we're heading to now. Um, again, this place featured on the mineral line, which we mentioned earlier, the iron ore that was mined around here. Um, um, that's so sad. It is really sad. Can you even see? I think you can see, because it's just mesh. Oh. That's some serious crunching. Oh, oh flies. You nice, doggy. <laughs> on the edge. Through farms and fields we walked in the muggy afternoon heat. It was pleasant enough, though not hugely stimulating. It's been a lot of field walking so far today. Uh, thankfully it hasn't rained too heavy, so the grass is quite dry. Otherwise we'd have soaking wet boots. Uh, navigation has been up and down, but being good, I'm enjoying being out. I've got a pretty bad stomach ache actually for some reason, so pace is a bit slow, but well, <laughs> let's see what happens with this rain, shall we? What with the intermittent rain, we all donned waterproofs. And then further along, could see the shadow of Dunkery Beacon, the highest point on Exmoor National Park, at 520 metres above sea level. By this point, I was hardly able to stand what with the pain in my stomach, but stumbled onwards into Wedden Cross in search of somewhere to rest. The pain was excruciating, and we seriously considered calling 999 for fear that I had ruptured something. I had collapsed in a heap in the porch of the church of St John the Evangelist, and we read that a fetal position could be helpful. After a couple of hours, the pain began to ease, and we decided to head back onto the trail, much to my relief. It was a very odd blip. I'm still not sure what happened, but I was very glad to get through it. Okay, things have taken a slight turn away from what was expected. Um, as you just heard in a voiceover, we are at the church here, and as you just saw in the video, I've been caught up here for a while um, with a very, very uncomfortable and painful stomach. In fact, I think that's probably the worst pain I've ever felt in my adult life. Um, I'm talking to you now because obviously I'm sat up, I'm feeling a lot better. Anna has stayed with me and looked after me and just been the best human ever. <laughs> 
Um, and we have sent Anne on, or Anne's chosen to go on, to where we're planning on wild camping tonight. So she's gone on and will just drop us a line depending on the situation. Um, and we'll meet her at camp. So the jury is still out as to how this walk is going to go because my stomach is not very happy at all. But I'm keen to press on. I mean, it's probably gone six now. So we've got a couple of hours and I think it's about four miles. It is exciting because we're going to go over Dunkery Beacon, which is the highest point um, in Exmoor National Park. So we'll, we'll head up over that. Um, we are going to like take a slight deviation from the main route, which sort of does a V-shape around the, eggs, e the edge of the common. We're going to go up over the top and join the join the little road and then we'll drop down to the valley where we're going to camp. That is the plan. Are you ready to get ready? I am. You are? Yeah, question is, are you? I'm going to do my best. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do in life, right folks? It's yeah. our best. Try. We keep try. Trying. Keep trying. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go. <laughs> Bye church. Thank you. <laughs> let's go. I can stand up for you. I'm never yeah. taking that for granted again. <laughs> Straight down. Yeah. Here we go. Dunkery. Dunkery Beacons, three miles away. So basically up there somewhere. Uh, and then our campsite's on the other side of that. Actually, I'll tell you what is nice, having left Wedden Cross, is we're now on the other map. So there's uh, two maps for the Coleridge Way, north and south, and this is the one that's going to take us all the way to Linton tomorrow. First of all, we have to find an Anne. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere. Anne! 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 <laughs> yeah, so Tom's path, no horses. Have we got that on the map? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, so we've we come here around here. It yeah. was here. And we're cutting off along this here, one. Exactly. Why it's called Tom's path, I don't know. I don't know either. Maybe it's Abby and Anna's path now. Maybe it is. Do you have a pen on you? Shall we just um, <laughs> change the change the OS map and the okay. sign? <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Crossing the road. Slip. Straight over. That's pretty. Really nice view down the valley. I mean, this is classic Exmoor now. Also, the weather is classic Exmoor. <laughs> this is a cool little path though, into the trees. But then I learned the German, and you learned the English. Yes, true. We could just learn it both at the same exactly. time. We're both learning language. Yeah. Mm. We have a new chief of navigation. <laughs> oh, you might regret it. No, I'm loving it. So there you go. Beautiful clear day. There's the track, you see? Yeah. Cool. The moors around Dunkery Beacon are extremely historical and they formed part of the Royal Forest of Exmoor, established by Henry II, and has also got several burial mounds near the summit, dating to the Bronze Age. All right, so we mentioned already Dunkery Beacon over there, 500 meters or so above sea level, highest point in the National Park. May or may not be able to see that small vehicle that's wide, blending in quite nicely with the horizon. That's the road we're aiming for, very nearly there. We have black stuff underneath our feet, goes by the name of tarmac well actually that's a brand but still i'm not here to advertise tarmac i'm here to advertise the coleridge way we are on the coleridge way actually that's a lie i'm lying to you a lot today we've taken a slight diversion i think i've already mentioned we have decided to cut across the top of dunkery hill into the cloud it seems or somewhat of a cloud uh and now we're gonna reach the sort of spot height that the road goes to i think it's about four four five and then drop down the other side to rejoin the trail just saving us a little bit of time today. Uh, I mean, it's probably quarter to eight, half past seven, quarter to eight. So I think it's allowed. How's navigation going, Chief Nav Officer? Well, it's really all right because we're just following the road right now. Yeah? There's not much you can do wrong. True that. Looks like it drops off the end of the world though. It's getting late, we're getting weary, we're on our way to camp. But alas, our progress has been stalled by one thing and only one thing, 
bilberries. Look at them all. <laughs> Did you find some? Mmm. Yummy. My girlfriend has been sick the whole day. She needs some good uh, antioxidants. I don't need them all. You can. Oh, okay. Do Your I mouth isn't there too much. Such bad light. Look how nice they are. <gasps> and all over here. Wild bilberries or mm. wild raspberries? Oh, that's a tough one. It is. I picked the bilberries for the health reasons. Yeah? Uh-huh. I picked them for the pure everything. I mean, look at them. They are... Pure very, happiness. That is, it is very true, but then the raspberries... Okay, yeah, fair point. <laughs> Today has definitely been a day of two halves. No, three thirds. This morning, when I woke up, I felt good. Then I felt bad and now I feel good again. Bilberries are good. It's really nice to just be out on their heat. Even though it's quite late, it feels pretty good. Um, just feels good to feel good. Uh, this afternoon, the pain in my stomach kind of freaked me out a little bit. I really didn't know what was going on, but flying uh, in the fetal position in the church porch clearly works some magic. Um, and I feel optimistic that we can finish this walk tomorrow. So tomorrow is about 18 miles, it's another long day. But let's finish up today, let's get to camp. Did you get some more bilberries? <laughs> well, quite. Well. Did you eat them? Maybe. <laughs> That's allowed. <laughs> I only picked about seven or eight. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. That's okay, you're worth more than seven or eight. Oh, <laughs> that's a tank. <laughs> oh look, classic Exmoor, happy days. Can you see? Just about through the mist, wooded valleys. Ah, oh, if only it was sunny right now. Although this is quite nice because there's no one else here. Weber's Post. Nice, good reference on there. Very good. Onwards. Mysterious shaped object that is intriguing me. <laughs> it's kind of like an apple core. It is an apple or something core anyway. Cool. A heart, yeah, or a heart. Oh yeah, a heart. I missed that bit. Okie dokie, so we're just walking through the woods. We're looking for a path on the left now. It's about half eight, so path on the left is going to take us down uh, to Horner Water, which is a river, and hopefully, well it's quite a long descent, the path should switch back, um, and then we'll find somewhere to camp down by the river. At least, that's the plan. What have we got here? Some hut thing, shelter. Seat commemorates Noel Vincent Allen, MBE. Writer and founder of Exmoor National History Society. Ooh. Alfred Rouse, writer, photographer, and conservationist who loved and cared for these hills. What else have we got? Dedicated to the staff of the Honnicote Estate, Exmoor Society. This is nice. And then over here, Writer and President of Exmoor Society and blank, Abby and Anna of Wild. So we can see there's obviously this path coming along here. Horner Water is down there. There's a sign saying Horner Water, which is a nice clue. What do you think? Right. It's your decision. Follow it or not. No, it's not. Uh, why is it my decision? Because you're doing nav now. Okay, I follow it. Follow it. Let's go. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's go then. Anne's down there somewhere. Wow. So you're right down the valley there. So we're going right to the bottom by this rather steep path. Just a little bit in the trees. To Horner, Tucker's path. Thanks, Tucker. Anne. Okay, I'm assuming she's gone. Uh -huh. Okay. <clears throat> Dark now. Yeah. Let's look left. Footbridge. Yeah. Plus it's naturally flat there. She might have just camped here. It's so nice down here though. Mm, Would have been nice in the like afternoon sun if there wasn't any. <laughs> Alright, we're down by the river. Now we just have to find an Anne. 
Um, no signal here, so a bit of a guessing game. Footbridge. <laughs> Let's go upriver for a few minutes. Okay. Yeah? So it's... I just, this side doesn't look like it. If so, but I it clears say, up, doesn't it? Does it? Oh, well, I, I see you mean this side, literally. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi! How do we get to you? We're gonna get over the bridge. Over the bridge. <laughs> okay, we're coming, Anne, we're coming. You don't need a phone. No. Just make you a just plan. have to have it's logic, good. make a plan, that's it. A, B, so done. good. Yeah. No phones today, it worked. Yeah. Oh, my heart feels so happy. Mm. <laughs> Oh, hang on. There's something lurking in the trees. What is it? What is that in the trees? What is it? What is it? What's that? It's an ant! Oh, that's a nice find. Hi. This is a nice pan. This is alright. I'm happy to camp it. Can we get to the river? Yeah, but can you get down to it? I think yeah. so. Day two done. Day you look cold. It's getting a bit chilly. All right, let's get some stuff out. Oh, sorry. I love you. <laughs> One bottle at a time. Yeah. Soy micro squeeze. We're going to use it to filter the water into these bottles. Oh, yeah, the midges are out. Yeah. <laughs> Just push it. Just squeeze, squeeze but don't force it too much. Yeah, it's slow. Yay. This is one of the fastest filters on the market as well. Good morning folks and welcome to the woods. This is our pitch last night. I have to say feeling a little bit rough this morning. It was a rough night. Uh, my head went into imagination mode. There was a very strange noise coming from the trees and the wind rubbing. It sounded like metal. Um, Anna tried to reassure me that it was a gate. My head was having none of the reassurance. Uh, we're up and getting ready to go now. So today we'll take us into Linton on the Coleridge Way. Um, I'm actually just going to hike in the trousers that I normally sleep in because I also had a bit of a tick infestation last night. I was covered in <laughs> tiny ticks. Uh, they're obviously very rife in this area. Uh, I've probably got plenty on me right now. And I like that Anne calls them hitchhikers, which is a cool name. It makes them seem a little bit less scary. <laughs> but we're just packing up and getting ready to go. It's obviously really beautiful here. You couldn't really see it last night, but just this secluded spot in the woods. We've got the river tumbling down alongside. We were filtering using the soya micro squeeze last night and we'll filter a little bit more this morning. Um, and then we'll get ready to go. So first stop is Porlock, and then basically it's uh, just a long old hike to Linton. Let's go. Where's my foot? Yeah. <laughs> back over the bridge we are going to follow the river down into Porlock this morning as opposed to climbing all the way back up to the trail so we are skipping a little bit of walking but pretty much just a couple of kilometers uh, at most further downstream there was actually a campsite where likely guests would not get quite so covered in ticks over the bridge, down to the river. Over the little bridge again. 
So cool. One of the things I really love about Exmoor is it just seems around every twist and turn there's something new to discover, whether it's flora and fauna or whether it's some kind of historical or archaeological site. I mean, if you only open your eyes, there's so much to see here. Love it. Finally, we had made it to Porlock. There is evidence that the village gains its name from the 10th century name, meaning enclosed by a harbour. After all, it does sit out on the coast. We noticed that the place had a number of historical pubs and inns, and plenty of quirky independent stores too. The church dates from the 13th century, and houses the 15th century tomb of John Harrington, who fought alongside Henry V in France during 1417. So just headed up the main road there, straight ahead, that is Porlock Hill. So it's one of the steepest hills in England, uh, one in four, and if you can't get up it, your advice to use the toll road, but it's like hairpin bends, so steep and it always smells of burning rubber here. Oh, yep, didn't need to inhale that deeply. Porlock Weir has been a small port for hundreds of years, the inhabitants being mainly fishing families. Many of the men built their own boats, usually about 20 foot in length. There's a picture of them there, look, hauling. Actually, they're crabbing, that's fun. <laughs> trade. Main trade was exporting flour and corn, bark for tanning, bricks, pit props for the Welsh coal mines, and oysters for Bristol. Wow. And over here, we have this. Fantastic view over the Exmoor coast. Now in the sunshine. <laughs> Further on, and the views opened out across the coast. Exmoor has a very remote coastline and has the most extensive broad leafed coastal woodlands in Britain. It certainly makes for a stunning sight. The hedges were also impressive, boasting wildflowers of every kind and colour, deserving of attention and appreciation. These are. No, no, All of the walk now that we've passed Porlock here is familiar territory to me. Done a lot of day walking around here, a uh, bit of camping, and I uh, produced a few films. So you can definitely head to the Exmoor playlist on uh, my channel to find out and watch some of the day walks around here. But the weather seems to be coming in now, as I'm sure you can hear. Uh, the others have just put their coats on. I'm a bit more warm-blooded. So unless it's pouring down, I tend to just <laughs> handle it. Anyway, we're getting there. Uh, heading on towards Colbone Church and Orford now. They're our next two destinations. Just uh, heading up now. A little bit higher, sort of a sea fret coming in actually. Uh, I don't know if you can see Anne behind, she's busy catching Pokemon. Priorities, Anne, priorities. <laughs> Apparently, it's a big day in Pokemon land. <laughs> okay, you ready? Oh, look, dead slow. Oh, yeah. Slow down. Can you see the sign? <laughs> sign? What sign? <laughs> A road that cuts across the moors here on Exmoor. Um, we're going to cut across it nice and easy. Still following the yellow quill, you see here. Uh, so we're heading to All Church now, that's going to take us down into Dune Valley and that's going to take us on to the East Lynn River. You can see here Orford, one and a quarter miles. By now, we really were in the heart of Exmoor's rolling green hills and open heathland, bracken, gorse and heather. It was a full 360 immersion of beauty. Alright, we've dropped down off the common, 
and into the edge or onto the edge of Orford. So very close to the Dune Valley, very uh, popular part of Exmoor, obviously famous for Lorna Dune and the story of Lorna Dune. I was going to pick up the trail now and head on towards Malmesmead and then on towards the East Lynn River down into Linton itself. Thank you! You're <laughs> All right then. Brendan Church sits two miles out of the village. It always reminds me of the story of Lorna Doone, since I came here on a school English trip once. Further down the road was the Cloud Farm campsite, one of my favourite campsites in the southwest. Recently, it's been taken over by the National Trust, so it might be a little different, but in truth, it's the landscape that makes it stunning, and that can't have changed too much. Here we are then. Mom's mead. Absolutely love this place. Jolly good cream teas. If you want to see a good cream tea, watch my video where I do a walk from Mom's mead. And there's the ford. Come check out the bridge. There's such nice daffodils here in spring as well. The 17th century bridge crosses Bagworthy River, and nearby is the East Lynn and Allwater rivers too. Again, much of the settlement has been bought out by the National Trust and was undergoing restoration as we passed through. Here we go, we have made it to Brendan. So this is where we cross over to the other side of the valley and we begin our journey along the East Lynn River right down to Linton. It's a very familiar stretch of walking for me. Lots of family time here, the dogs love it. Uh, I tend to bring people who enter into my life on their first walk with me here. This is a really nice walk from County Gate up along the coastal path. So um, let's get this done. Last little bit of the Coleridge Way. At Brendan, we stopped for a snack, indulging in some Biscoff biscuits that Anna had sneakily brought along, and pistachios, because why not? Then it was on and over the river, the bridge marking the boundary between Brendan and Countersbury. Waters meet two and a half miles. Let's go. It's all happening. So we are on the final four and a half miles of the way. So we have left Brendan and we're heading towards Watersmeet, which is a very uh, popular spot owned by the National Trust, the old fishing lodge there, uh, about two and a half miles away. And then from there, it's about two down to Linton. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting stories along this stretch of path. And um, I'm sure I'll share some of them as we head on. Thank you. You're welcome. We were now entering the Watersmeet estate, boasting a wealth of native woodland, wildlife and rivers. Yeah. I practically learned to walk on this final leg of trail. It was really very familiar to me. Our path twisted and turned this way and that, always following the East Lynn River. At times it was ferocious and wild, and yet others placid and calming. After a few miles, we reached Watersmead House, a former fishing lodge built around 1832. We made it to Watersmead. Watersmead House is there. It's actually a tea room, jolly good cream teas, I have to say. Mum loves them there. Uh, so we're crossing over the river here now, East Lynn. We're about to join the confluence point, or reach the confluence point, where um, another major river comes down, and it was this one that led to the flooding disaster in Linton in 1952. The Limmer flood of 52 occurred after a storm with heavy rainfall, combined with saturated soil and flood debris, caused a massive flood downstream, killing 34 people and destroying over 100 buildings. 420 people were also left homeless. There is a memorial room in Linmouth itself, where articles and videos depict the devastating scene.
Now here's a good sign to find. Linmouth, one and a half miles. So we're very, very nearly there now. Loving this walk along the river. I mean, it's just so nice. The sound of the water, you see dippers and yellow wagtails. You've got the rocks just uh, parting the water. Uh, there's just, you know, the trees where they kiss the surface of the water. It is just so nice out here. I love it, love it, love it. And um, yeah, it's also obviously going to be a very monumentous moment to reach Linma. Uh, the anticipation is growing, feeling in very good spirits. Um, let's do this thing. Nearly there. Anne! 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 <laughs> I saw a dipper. Where? Back there. Oh no. I know. I've been looking for them. Yeah, I saw one. We're just coming up to the site of the old mineral water factory. Uh, there's a bottle in the wall and there's a plaque as well. It says, This is the site of the Linrock Mineral Water Factory Distillery. In the 1952's flood, it was destroyed. And you can see here, picture of the building that fit in here it's crazy I don't know how that fit oh yeah they made ginger beer with it yeah, they did. until We're nearly there, Anna. We are. How are you feeling? Good. Yeah? Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. Nearly Happy at the end days. of your first trail. I know. That's so cool. New boots. Yeah. Feet are still attached. Yeah. New pack. Yeah. Back is still attached. Yeah. New adventure. Yeah. Neck is still attached. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, Coat. Coat. Yeah. Not new, but for me. Second hand. And it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Um, new girlfriend. <laughs> Still mine? Yeah, that's good. I mean, uh, <laughs> going strong. <laughs> Happy days. And Anne is on a mission because she knows there's a brew at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Further down river, just before entering Linmouth, we pass by the brand new Woodside Bridge, built following a £65,000 community campaign. Then, before we knew it, the forest opened up to houses and B&Bs, and we were in the village itself. The anticipation was seriously building. Blue sky, happy days. And there you can just see the tower on the coast coming up. Nearly there. Beep beep. There you go. Exmoor Visitor Centre, that's where the trail ends. Are you proud of yourself? No, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Me? Yeah. Why? You just took me out here and you let me survive. I let you survive? Yeah, you yeah I could have chosen not to. You, I wouldn't have survived. Yeah? You'd be alright. We're going that way. Okay, please watch your steps. <laughs> Thank you. Let, let, let me let you survive. <laughs> down the main high street, which is quite shut now. I guess it's five, isn't it? Well, we can only hope, Anne. Anne wants her pasty. Let's go. Pasty and a cup of tea. And here it is! We have made it to the end of the Coleridge Way. So we have the sign here. Uh, basically, this is a good place for me. So I've ended here before with the Two Moors Way. Long this trail it starts at Wembury, goes up through Devon. And finally we're here, Linton. Once again, I swore I'd be here at the end of the Coleridge Way and I've done it. But of course, I did not do it alone. I did it with these two wonderful ladies who I could not have asked for better company. How are you guys feeling? Very good. Feeling good? Yes. Yeah? Nana? Very good. And yeah. did you enjoy the trip? I did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I did loads though. 
Yes. Yeah. There were yeah. a lot of highs. A lot of highs. Always in highs and lows. Always highs, right? Low, yeah. <laughs> that was a good metaphor for life. So um, the sun is shining now, finally. Yeah. 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 We <laughs> had to go while. through the rain, the to, rain yeah. to get to the sunshine. Do, yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, but honestly, it's it's been a good trail. I mean, it's been a good experience because it's a it's a lesser known route. Um, so sort of experiencing the signing, experiencing the sort of field sections and how to sort of navigate them. We got through it together. We did good teamwork. And what I like is we all worked well together. Yeah. This yeah. is new for all of us. Anne normally does all her crazy adventures solo. I usually backpack solo and of course this is Anna's first trip as well. So well done Anna. But there we go. We're going to end our trip here. Uh, Anna wants to go and buy a pasty before the shop shuts. So that is a priority. And I think I'm just going to stand and soak up the view for a little bit. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. Lindmuff really was a wonderful place to wrap up our adventure and we stood looking out over the horizon for a while, silent, each lost in our own thoughts. Then it was time to turn around and get that pasty that we all so desperately wanted. A massive shout out to the bakehouse for supplying us with some delicious treats to end our travels. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I think we're good to go. <laughs> Have I got broccoli in my teeth? Um, no, you're looking good. <laughs>